Jeff Thomas was a star in high school and showed flashes of brilliance during his time at Miami, but off the field issues would end up stunting his career. Now he's been picked up by the New England Patriots, and I truly think this kid could be the secret weapon and could be a future star. The reason I'm making today's video is because Jeff was a guy I followed really closely in high school recruiting, and he's a pretty interesting football story, and I really want to tell it to you guys. But first, if you are new to the channel, I make videos all about college football, and I need your help to reach 6,000 subscribers by the end of August. If you clicked on this video, I know you're a football fan, so why not subscribe? Let me know what I should do next down in the comment section, and turn on post notifications so you never miss another upload. Now let's get started with the story of Jeff Thomas. Jeff grew up in the troubled area of East St. Louis, Illinois, and loved football from a very young age. In an area full of systematic racism, poverty, and violence, the odds that Jeff would ever make it out were low to none. The murder rate was 17%, and it was one of the most dangerous cities in the country. Thomas grew up loving the game of football, and he used it as a safe haven. Eventually, when he got to East St. Louis High School, he knew football could potentially be his way out. Jeff is a very private guy about his life, and not many people know his true past as he declines interview requests and refuses to talk about his story. Ever since he was in kindergarten, his friends knew he was going to make it to the pros one day and escape the terrible area. Now that he was in high school, he was going to have a real chance as he was already super talented and scouts knew who he was. East St. Louis may have been a terrible area, but they had produced some high quality players in both football and basketball over the past few years. Jeremiah Tillman was a borderline five-star basketball recruit who would end up playing for Missouri's basketball team. Terry Beckner Jr. was a five-star defensive tackle who played for Missouri as well and was drafted by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They had other kids too, but nevertheless the school was talented and one of the better high school football programs in the Midwest. As a sophomore, the team went undefeated and they even got a documentary about the season made for them. Jeff caught a game-stealing touchdown to solidify the season, and as only a sophomore, he was a star. That moment was really important because a few weeks prior to that, Jeff had begun to miss classes and practices and was almost kicked off the team. The coaches thought it was some sort of act, but Jeff had a reason for it. He'd taken up a full-time job to pay for his infant daughter, and everyone was shocked. Some say, why don't you just tell the coaches about it? But he didn't really want to be all dramatic, he didn't want them to pity him, and he just wanted to go to work and provide for his family. It could be a blessing and it's also a curse for him. This is a life lesson we can all learn, to not jump to conclusions and assume the worst about people because you never know what someone is going through. I remember following him closely in high school because he was a big time target that Mizzou was recruiting really hard. As his high school career progressed, he got more and more recognition and was a consensus top 100 player. He caught two touchdowns in the prestigious Army All-American game and he was able to go anywhere in the country if he wanted to. After that game, Mark Rick put all the resources into getting him and the Canes wanted him bad. Despite interest from Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Michigan, and Oregon, he didn't have that many offers because of the proclaimed character issues he had. Miami and the staff knew the truth about Jeff and gave him a chance. Thomas ended up committing to the Hurricanes over Tennessee, Oregon, and Illinois. Scouts knew the kid had big time talent as he was compared to former NFL Pro Bowler and St. Louis native Jeremy Macklin. According to 24-7 Sports, Jeff Thomas was a four-star recruit, the number five wide receiver, and the 40th best player in the class of 2017. Jeff arrived at Miami, and going into the 2017 season, the Canes were going into their second season under head coach Mark Rick, who was fired by Georgia two years earlier. The Canes had a pretty talented team that included quarterback Malik Rozier, running back Travis Homer, and wide receiver Braxton Berrios. Thomas was expected to play from the moment he stepped foot on campus, and that is exactly what happened. In his first career game against Bethune-Cookman, he caught a pass, but it went for negative yards. He then caught a pass for no yards against Duke, and then caught a pass for positive yards against Florida State. The kid took baby steps, but you can't discredit the man for that. He improved every game. He had a then career-high 78 yards against Georgia Tech before he caught his first touchdown pass of his career against Syracuse. To this point, Miami was 6-0 and ranked number 8 in the country before a showdown with North Carolina. The Canes would face another tough test the following week, as they were matched up with number 13 Virginia Tech. In a game that Jeff didn't appear in, the Canes beat the Hokies pretty easily. Their next matchup was so big that college game day came to town for their matchup with number 3 Notre Dame. The Canes blew the Irish out of the water and were now number 2 in the country. Jeff didn't contribute much the rest of the season, but they would beat Virginia before their week 14 matchup with Pitt. The Panthers had struggled mightily all year long, and despite all the Canes' momentum and everything on the line, they lost by 10 to Pitt, and their miracle season and their college football playoff hopes were fading very quickly. They would have a chance to get to the playoff if they beat number one Clemson in dominating fashion in the ACC championship game, but they got destroyed. They got selected to play in the Orange Bowl against Wisconsin, and they lost the game to the number six Badgers. 
The Hurricanes ended up going from 10-0 to 10-3, and, and their game versus Arkansas State was canceled due to Hurricane Irma. As a true freshman, Thomas got 17 passes for 374 yards and two touchdowns, while also becoming a factor in special teams. He did well, but there were problems brewing for him. Jeff had become very homesick and would spend days at a time back home in East St. Louis, where he would skip team meetings in class. It would be fine for now, but he needed to get his act together. Rozier was still the quarterback, Homer and DJ Dallas were the running backs, and Jeff Thomas and Lawrence Cager became the go-to wide receivers. They opened up the season against LSU, where they would lose. Thomas set the tone for the season though, as he caught 5 passes for 132 yards. He caught a 67-yard touchdown against Savannah State the following week, and 105 yards and a touchdown against Toledo. The kid was blossoming into a star at this point, and the sky was the limit. The Canes beat Florida International in North Carolina before Thomas got a touchdown in their win over Florida State. The Canes had rebounded and were now sitting back at number 16 in the country. This would be the end of the happiness for both Miami and Jeff though, as they got upset by Virginia, lost to Boston College, got upset by Duke, and then lost on the road to Georgia Tech. Jeff was missing more meetings, getting in more arguments with the coaches, and was no longer producing on the field either. He wasn't getting the ball enough, and he butted heads with the staff. Head coach Manny Diaz did defend him, saying it really was nothing about his character, it was just the fact that Jeff was very competitive and very serious about football. They would beat Virginia Tech and number 24 Pittsburgh to finish the season, but Jeff had already been dismissed by head coach Mark Richt in late November. The Canes would not only lose their best wide receiver, but also to Wisconsin again, this time in the Pinstripe Bowl. Controversy had now begun as Thomas would both transfer and enroll at Illinois for the 2019 season. Once Rick retired, Manny Diaz approached Jeff about coming back to Miami, and that would actually end up happening. He would get one more chance to prove himself, and he was ready for the opportunity. Going into 2019, the Canes were led by sophomore quarterback Jaron Williams, and Jeff was going to be the main target on the team. The Canes were set to open up the season on neutral turf against rival Florida, and it was a week before every other game, and it was a really good game. He caught two passes and struggled to ever put anything together for most of the year. A career-high seven passes against North Carolina, and 124 yards and two touchdowns against Virginia Tech. He showed flash against Florida State, and he caught 84 yards and a touchdown against the Dolls. The Canes would end up going 6-6, six and six, and then lose to Florida International 14 to nothing. They would go 6-7 and seven on the year, and it was kind of embarrassing for the program to get shut out by them. As a junior, Jeff showed flash, but he didn't put together a full season. He got 31 passes for 379 yards and three touchdowns, which really wasn't anything special. I do blame part of this on the offensive coordinator, and especially on the quarterback play though. After the season, he declared for the 2020 NFL Draft. Despite his mediocre stats, Jeff was invited to the NFL Combine, and he was the smallest player at the event. That must show that he really was talented, and that he really does have a chance in the future, because with those kind of stats and those kind of off the field issues, most kids like that would not get invited to the Combine. He literally looked as if he was Tyree Kill 2.0, as Jeff was insanely quick and speedy, and the end had off the field issues. Despite doing well at the Combine, the red flags and the mediocre stats would come back to haunt him as he'd go undrafted in the 2020 NFL Draft. He was picked up by the New England Patriots and he will compete for a spot on the roster this fall. If we can ever learn from history, we know that Bill Belichick will get the most out of his players and he has a knock for hiding hidden gems. Jeff Thomas is a player who's quick, has good hands, runs routes well, is athletic, and has a tough mindset, all things you want out of a wide receiver. I think Jeff has the potential to make the Patriots and play. Everyone knows the best way to secure a roster spot if you're a fringe guy is by doing well on special teams, and that is something that Thomas excelled at in Miami. He was one of the best kick and punt returners in the country, and he was a threat to take it to the house every time he touched the ball. I think he has a really cool story, and I hope he ends up making the final 53-man roster and becomes a playmaker for him. If you enjoyed today's video or think that he could become a good weapon for the Pats, be sure to smash that like button and let me know what you think down in the comment section. If you're a Patriots fan, let me know what you think of Thomas. If you're new to the channel, I really need your help to reach 6,000 subscribers by the end of August. If you're still here, check out my video about the rise of Justin Jefferson and all my other NFL player story videos. I hope you guys have a good day, but until next time, peace.